Well, hi there. Glad you can join me today. Today we have a fantastic little painting, so let's go ahead and get started. And as you know, we always begin our uh, canvas by uh, preparing our canvas here. There, just like that. Now, today's topic we're going to talk about today is... Let's see, first of all, let's get a little alizarin crimson, a little cobalt white there. And, and what we're talking about today is the Holy Trinity. There we go. That's nice. Well, hi there. Father Francis here. And uh, yes, I'm here with another video theme. Today, we're going to talk about the Holy Trinity. And we're doing it a la Bob Ross, the late, great Bob Ross. Now, I have to say a couple of things real quick. One, I'm not trying to satirize Bob Ross at all. Uh, actually, I loved Bob Ross. And there's a reason why I'm using a Bob Ross theme to introduce the, the topic of the Holy Trinity. Hopefully, in a few moments, that'll all become abundantly clear. Um, today, we talk about the Holy Trinity. And the Holy Trinity is, first and foremost, a mystery. Now, in many attempts to try to explain the Holy Trinity, I and my other colleagues probably have used the analogy of water. And basically, you just get a test tube. You talk about getting a, a, a long test tube and fill it full of water. And on one end, you freeze it. The other end, you heat it up, make it into a vapor. And there, in the same time and space, you have water, same, you know, same uh, um, molecule there or uh, substance and it has three phases. It has a frozen phase, a liquid phase, and a vapor phase. And a lot of times people will use that to say, well this is an, a, kind of like a model, if you will, an analogy of what the Trinity may be like. Well, I have to be honest with you, it's kind of a crude analogy, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. And so one day I was uh, up in Tahoe City, filling in in a parish about 10 years ago, and um, the thing that happened was I was going to be preaching uh, to, and I was going to be saying an outdoor mass. Now, I've never said an outdoor mass. And when I noticed all of the people that were coming, I got nervous. I got a little terrified, a little stage fright, if you will. And it's one thing to be able to say mass in a parish or your home parish or a place where you know the people. But to see, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people you don't know, it actually can be kind of uh, nerve wracking. In fact, one of the great fears that many people have is, is the fear of public speaking. Well, I'm no different. And uh, so what happened was I was a little bit panicked and I thought, oh gosh, I wish I could, you know, just settle down and calm down enough to come, come up with some ideas. And um, so what happened was I reflected back to the night before and I was, had been watching, of all things, a Bob Ross painting video. Now, Bob Ross is, was wonderful. Those of us who remember him and uh, loved him, you know, were amazed at how he could take a, an ordinary canvas and within a matter of 20 minutes or so, turn it into a very beautiful little picture. And, uh, and I remember another element about Bob Ross, and many people have commented on this, was the tranquility and the serenity that he projected. You know, he wasn't nervous, he wasn't anxious, he wasn't angry, you know, like I get when I, when I try to do a painting or something like that, mostly Final Cut Pro. And uh, so the thing is that uh, Bob Ross is very, had a very calming influence, better than a double martini, let me tell you. And uh, so I remember thinking that, that after that morning, you know, why not think about the Trinity, instead of trying to use models like something from science, why don't you try using an artistic motif? And sure enough, that's what happened. And I'm going to explain that here in just a minute. The Holy Trinity is very much like an artist. You know, science can sometimes explain the mysteries of God to some extent. But I think music and poetry and art do a far better job of conveying the mysteries of the faith. Well, let me explain that. Let's First of all, let's load up our brush here. Tap, 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 tap. Those of you who remember Bob Ross. And we're going to load up our brush. And let's, let's start right over here. And let's, there we go. That's it right there. We're going to paint a little face, a little happy face. But you know what? In our world, there lives another little happy face, and he lives right about there. Yeah, that's good, right there. But you know what? 
They know they say three's, two's company and three's a crowd, but you know what? I'm going to challenge that thought. I'm going to paint one more little happy face right there. Yeah, that's good. Right there. That's nice. You know what? Let's finish this. Let's just finish this painting off, shall we? You know, I know Bob Ross would take about 20 minutes or so, and he would finish off his painting. But we're going to finish off this painting here because this is an image of an icon. And it just happens to be, you guessed it, an icon of the Holy Trinity. Now again, icons help us enter into the mysteries of the faith in a way that no, no other things really can help. Now, it's interesting because an icon, of course, is a picture. It's, it's an image. It's a holy image. And throughout the centuries, the Christ Christians have used holy icons to help them in prayer and meditation, to help them delve more into fully the, more fully the mysteries in which they are contemplating. And so, in some ways, the Trinity can be likened to, if you will, a painting. Why? Well, first of all, you've got to have a canvas, like we have here. You've got to have uh, some paints, like I have right here. And you have to have not just a brush to apply the paint, but you have to have an artist. Now, I don't consider myself an artist, so relax. But I'm only playing one today. I'm not a real artist, I only play one on TV. And so that's what we have. We have a Trinitarian formula for making a painting or an icon or an image. You have a canvas, you have paint, and you have an artist. Now there's another artist I want to share with you real quickly, and while time permits, that also has a very magical appeal. Let me go ahead and uh, let's clear off our painting here. Okay, and get it ready for the next one. Now this artist is an artist that many people are familiar with. And this artist's paintings, I believe, happen to have, before they leave their showrooms, I think, and I'm, I believe with all my heart, they're sprinkled with magic dust. And here's the painting, and maybe you'll recognize who, I'm, who this is. Okay, here we go. You're going to be amazed at how, how I can paint so, some, so, some, some beautiful pictures. Here we go. And does anyone recognize this painting right now? I'm sure you do. Yes, ah, that's good. That's nice. That's a, um, it's not a Bob Ross, but it's a Kincaid, Thomas Kincaid painting, the painter of light. Now, the reason why I paint this particular image here is about 10 years ago, I was in Germany of all places, and a friend of mine sent me an image very similar to this one. And I have to tell you, that image was the most beautiful image that I had seen in a long time. And the reason why I like these Thomas Kincaid paintings, and all paintings have this quality, is what they, is that they bring you in, they draw you in. And when I looked at this painting, I stared at it for a long time, and my mind began to create uh, an event in my life. Now, I've had similar events to be sure, but not quite the same, but I've kind of, you know, merged a lot of personal experience into this one image. And I could picture myself at the end of a long, uh, warm uh, spring afternoon, Night is, the sun has just set, and I come up upon this little green, sleepy river here. And I look at that river, and I begin to look at the little ripples coming up from the water, you know, the fish feeding at night. And then you can almost hear the buzz of mosquitoes, you know. And um, it's a real sleepy kind of tranquil scene. And you look at the bridge, and you go over this rock bridge to this beautiful cottage over here in the background in the clearing. You see the glowing lights. And you know that when you go to that cottage and you open the door, there's going to be wonderful food and wonderful things to eat and drink and wonderful people to spend time with in the evening. Perhaps at the end of the, the evening, you'll have a nice, warm, wonderful dessert with a nice hot cup of coffee to wash it all down. The perfect end of the perfect day. Well, that's what that image kind of helped me to create in my soul. So, in other words, when we look at images like this, we look at holy icons, we aren't trying to uh, describe or explain a thing, but we're trying to enter into a personal relationship with a God who loves us. The God who creates the heavens and the earth and everything in, within. And so I hope that gave you a little idea there to maybe somehow, you know, use art uh, to help you to paint yourself into the mysteries of the Holy Trinity. Thank you for watching and God bless.